Hey, welcome back. Now we drive um, Orange Mini Cooper time. Um, I thought it'd be a really good idea. Um, I know it's like London buses, right? You don't get none for a, for a couple of weeks and we I'll smash out two videos in a couple of days, but that's just the way it works sometimes. Orange Mini, as you well know, flood damage. Uh, bought it from Copar, ooh, late, late November, early December, I think it was. Um, and it took me such a long time to get the ECU, the BDE, BDC ECU unit for it, which I had to go and get the logbook, but I'm sure if you've seen the previous videos, you'll notice. Not until I got the, um, the ECU unit could we start to figure out exactly what had gone wrong. So today I'm going to recap on what we had to do to get the car back on the road and running. Now, I've been driving it around for the last 24 hours. There's a couple of little issues with it. Um, not insurmountable. So let's have a recap on exactly how we've got this water damaged, flooded, very damp Mini back on the road. Here's the first port of call when it comes to actually figuring out what was going wrong. Now, I'm gonna try and get a really good look at some of the damage. Now, if you can see those kind of blue mottly areas in there, that's where the water had got in pretty bad and it was it was unserviceable we sent it off to a, a specialist that can repair a few bits and pieces here but this was unserviceable now the problem like i said in previous videos is i had to uh, go and get exactly the same one or the it wouldn't have been warranted couldn't have got it recoded by mini if i ever needed to take it back there which i didn't fortunately not yet anyway um so I had to go and buy a, a direct replacement from Mini, which was, I think, 680 quid. Um, and that was discounted, would you believe? So, uh, yeah, that was the first part. That was the first part. So next up on our list of uh, parts needed, um, we were getting airbag lights flashing up once the uh, ECU had been uh, completely programmed. And I don't think it will take a, an electronics engineer to figure out why. This is actually the, um, the airbag module. Show you the part number. But basically, as you can see, the corrosion on here was awful. There was, it was just um, irreparable. And these, these are, we got this for like 50 quid off, off of eBay. So that was easy. It was a, I think it's a pretty much a common part amongst um, BMW and Minis. These are standard modules. And again, plug in plug out and uh, nice easy fix so if you go going back to I'll, I'll tell you, I'll put a card up here to explain how we got it off the trailer eventually but it's quite a funny story you should check it out if you can um, but we couldn't get it off the trailer uh, and we couldn't get it out of park so I think you obviously figured out from the ECU there was water pretty high up inside the uh, in, in, inside the footwells of, of both passenger and, uh, and driver's side. We figured out that there must be something wrong with this, this module, which is the automatic transmission selector module in the Mini. Um, we took it out, we had a look. Uh, it's a little inspection hatch just here, took it out. There was quite a lot of moisture in there. We figured it had to be this. Ordered a new one on eBay, 75 quid, I think it was. Yeah, with postage, into, yeah, 75 pounds. Um, same part number, it came, we plugged it in, drove straight away. That was a really easy fix. So um, yeah, fantastic. Next up was the instrument cluster. Now, this bad boy uh, was, now, you tell me, I don't know, but how, how does something so high on the dash um, get so much moisture in? Maybe it was just, you know, as the moisture started to evaporate, it somehow got into this, but it, it was all over the shop. The, uh, the, all the lights were on. We, we had a quick look. We couldn't see anything too much in there, but there was definitely a fault coming up for this, for the instrument cluster. Again, I think this was 90 quid off of eBay, um, a straight swap, because it doesn't, it, it's, just a, it's just a readout uh, cluster. Really. It doesn't do anything besides just show the mileage and, uh, whatever the ECU is telling it. So again, popped it out, very straightforward. Sit one plug in and out, and it was fixed. So that was a really easy, uh, really easy swap out as well. Those three parts, the uh, ECU, the airbag monitor, the airbag module, uh, and the uh, automatic transmission uh, selector, and this, that, 
that's all the parts we needed right up to now to get this back on the road. Obviously we needed to program it, which has been done. Um, but that's how we got the this orange mini back on the road. So let me quickly, um, let's, let's, let's have a look around the car just to give you some idea of one, why I bought it in the first place, but two, why I think it's an absolute bargain of a car. And um, I think it's a resale really, really, really well. So let's have a look around here. So as you can see, it, there are, <laughs> it's very difficult to uh, to see too much wrong with this because obviously it's not a standard Copart car with loads of bodywork damage. Now there's a couple of, now I'm not sure this was actually here. This I think this happened while it was at the garage, which is this this small scrape. Now it's, it's the old fingernail rule. You can actually put your finger in it. So that's gonna have to be touched up because besides that scratch, <laughs> there are zero issues with this bodywork. It is absolutely in pristine condition. All of the wheels um, are literally brand new, as you would expect from a car that's a 68 plate. Tires are all good. Um, you've got a small a small scuff which will polish out. I've just brought it back from the car wash. So this will all polish out. Um, but again, uh, wheels are all fantastic. The rest of the bodywork is, again, absolutely absolutely fantastic um as you drive it back from the uh, car wash but again it's very difficult to see anything else that's wrong with this car um now unlike a lot of copart cars uh you usually have to uh worry about but we've got the locking wheel nut which is quite handy and that's there with the, the tow hook there isn't the um that there's a pump system that it comes with that's obviously gone but uh, yeah, it's all uh, it's all present and correct as far as the lock and wheel nut is concerned. So if we're going to sell this as a pretty much a new car, um, no floor mats, which is a bit annoying. But I've just bought some uh, original Cooper mats with actually with orange piping, which is quite nice. Oh, the one thing I was really surprised at, I don't know if you noticed, this has got the John Cooper Works uh, pack on. Now, obviously I've got a John Cooper Works and it's, it's so new that no one's actually figured to take off the protective uh, film that goes that goes, that goes goes on it. So um, just before I'm gonna sell it, obviously I'll, I'll take that off because you can see this kind of blue hue on the, uh, on the kick plate, I think they call it. But it's never been taken off. That's how, that's how new this thing is. Um, so getting in the car. Oh. Standard mini fare, would you say? Um, but now we have no lights. Everything's all present. Now, <laughs> look at that for mileage. You see that? 8409. So 8,400 miles, it's uh, such a low mileage car. Um, now, obviously you won't be able to get it on the, uh, on the, on the video, but there's still a, a slight muskiness to the interior of the car. Now, the carpets are bone dry, but obviously with the amount of water that would have been in here, because this area here is where the ECU, let me get that on there, the ECU unit would have been down in this passenger footwell. So the water, I would imagine it's going to come up to here maybe, maybe here, because obviously we replace this, so the water must have come up to this point uh, around here to make this uh, wet enough to, uh, to, to fail. So yeah, that was, uh, that was something that is unavoidable. Oh, the other thing that's a little bit annoying is, I'm not sure if there's any water uh, issues with the uh, passenger seat, but if I take the if I take the um, seat belt off, we have still got the, the seat belt light on, which means there is a problem either that because we've had the seat out or the garage had the seat out for me to to take the carpet up to get to the cabling etc. So either we've not got the pad plugged in or water's got into the pad. There's a pad sensor inside the seat or under the seat to check where, whether or not someone's sitting in it, and that may be faulty. But they're really cheap, they're like 30 quid to change. All I've got to do is take the seat out, so I'll figure that one out. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, which quite kindly my wife has 
given me is some leather cleaner. As you can see, it's it's like it is cream leather, and it's going to get dirty. But it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit funky around the edges. So I'm going to give that a clean up because beautiful leather with the grey piping. So we're going to give that a go. And given it's only eight thousand miles on the clock, um, we want to make sure that it's. Uh, that is in pristine condition. Uh, as far as driving wise, so we've checked all of the uh, all of the coolant, oil, water, everything's absolutely fine. So we know that there was no water in the engine, there's no milkiness of the oil, everything was fine. It runs great. I've had it up to a pretty high speed, I'm not gonna say half a high on the A10, but we got it up pretty high just to give it a good run. The battery was a bit flat, but obviously it's been sitting around for two and a half months waiting for parts etc etc and it wasn't running as you all know so we've, uh, I've taken it for a nice long run and it all it starts absolutely fine now um, ah, there was one other thing which is a little bit annoying is um, I believe this is going to be programming because it has got factory fitted uh, heated seats now I'm not sure whether again there was some there's some water in the seats but there would be a fault I'm sure and I think this is a programming issue which we're going to have to address they, these don't work. Um, everything else works. You know, the heater, uh, it all works fine. Um, um, start stop works fine. The, uh, all of this works absolutely as it should. Traction control works. Sport mode works. Right. Uh, yeah, everything's um, as it should be. Even the horn works, which is great. So, yeah, besides those small points, um, I think we are pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna clean up the leather, put the mats in. Um, what I've been doing is driving around uh, with this this heater on, on 28 in the footwell. It's noisy, but I've been putting it on so we get every last piece of piece of moisture out of the car. Um, as far as as far as the back, the rear of the car is concerned, um, again, it's, it's bone dry. The seats are in really good nick. Um, as you would expect from a car of this age. So, oh, and another thing, I don't know if you can see, but we've got the the factory fitted double sunroofs in this car, which is fantastic. Uh, really, really nice, which is, which is great. So yeah, there you go, that's inside the car. So that's the update on the Mini. Sorry about the last couple of clips because I've just gone back and rewatched it and uh, I noticed the mic wasn't on, but it, it, the, the audio was good enough for, to, uh, to carry on with. Um, so, orange mini back on the road um, like I said a couple of little bits we need doing but that's not going to be a problem what's next for the mini once I've cleaned the seats up got the last few bits done um, I think that if you look on Auto Trader, um, you'll see that with the extras it's got the low mileage and stuff like that you're looking at a 17 grand 16 17 grand car um, which I think is worth every penny of that now does a category N car that's not got any damage as far as bodywork, structural, etc., but just some water electrical damage like ours has got. Is that more value, better value? Is that gonna be not this kind of two thirds, one third rule you get with most category yen cars you see marketed on eBay, Auto Trader? I'm not sure. But given that we pay just a little over seven for it, let's let's say all in we're gonna spend another fifteen hundred quid on the car. So we end up at costing us about eight and a half okay I can't see how we can't market this car for around 12 I don't I don't think it's outrageous you're getting five grand off for a, for a fantastic condition car with no bodywork damage all of the uh, all of the parts that were needed change for original mini parts some of them new as you've seen um, low mileage super super duper spec why can't this be worth 12k even if I get 11 for it great turn of profit which uh, with most Copart cars is not usually the case. So um, yeah, um, and apologies for not, given that it's not been the instructional video that you know maybe the John Cooper works was or, or other, other um, videos on my channel, but it really was very modular. Take it out, see if it was not working, replace it for another one. Not the most fun if we'd have videoed it. So um, apologies for that, but you know what? Um, given that the the um, engine and gearbox were fine, they were the big issues that, in my mind when I bought the car of the the, the possible worst case nightmare scenarios that could have happened. That's that's what I was most happy about. And given that I got away with just a few parts, poor, so lucky, so so lucky. 
So there you go, Orange Mini, uh, pretty much to its conclusion. So thank you for spending your time with me on this video today. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you, hopefully you'll come back very, very soon. Uh, don't forget, notification, subscribe, like, etc., etc. Uh, you, you know what I really like is if you comment, even if they're bad comments like, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're doing, I, I just welcome it. It's great for a bit of interaction because, as I say, I've only been doing this a few months now um, and I really enjoy doing it and I hope you enjoy watching me do it as well. So that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, um, some more cars coming this week. Uh, last week on Copart didn't go so well. Every time I set myself a, 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 a water line for a, for a bidding price, it went miles over. I don't know, maybe people's got more money after Christmas. I don't know, I really don't know. But we've got four cars I've really, I'm really looking at this week. There's, um, there's an A45 AMG, a C40, C45, the fast uh, A-Class, which I'm looking at, really nice. That's up in Sandy. There's a, an, uh, another Golf R I'm looking at, really nice. Again, that's a 16 plate. Hopefully it's not gonna go for too much, but again, just the front ending in that one. Another Jag, really wanna do a Jag F-Type. Really, really wanna do a Jag F-Type. Love the cars, and I've not seen one done on YouTube before. That's gonna be fantastic. I know a few, a few guys have uh, comment, commented on that as well. So yeah, don't forget to come back and see me soon. And uh, thank you for joining us once again on Now We Drive.